Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Race. Man, I'm glad that you're here today. Today we're, uh, we're reading kind of uh, the passage here where God's promise of having a son finally comes into play, uh, finally comes true. Uh, Abraham, Sarah have a child, but in the midst of this great joy, in the midst of this great blessing, is some pain, is some conflict, are some issues because, well, they t- tried to take a shortcut and they didn't trust God fully in this. And it led to some complications. And I don't know if you've ever been there before, right? We uh, are, are impatient. We try to push the storyline forward in our, in our lives. We try to solve our problems ourselves and we end up making a mess of things. <clears throat> we cause additional conflict. We cause additional problems. And in the end, it all works out, but you kind of look back at the journey and you're like, man, if I could do that again, I could have, that would have been so much simpler if I would have just trusted God a little more. If I had just been a little more patient, if I had just been a little less anxious, that journey to get where I'm at would have been a much straighter path, a much smoother path, and I wouldn't be dealing with these extra issues once I got here. That's, I think, I've got to believe that's what Abraham and Sarah were believing here in this moment. So, Genesis chapter 21. Isaac is born. Abraham and Sarah have a son, Isaac. Abraham is 100 years old. Sarah is uh, in her 90s. Uh, Very, very unusual. Very obviously, right? Like you can't express that enough. Um, Literally, as the passage talks, uh, it talks about Sarah is is almost giddy with joy. Uh, She says, she declares, God has brought me laughter. All who hear about this will laugh with me. Who would have said Abraham and Sarah would nurse a baby, yet have given Abraham a son in his old age? As Isaac got a little bit older and he was about to be weaned, Abraham prepared a huge feast to celebrate the occasion. Verse 9, But Sarah saw Ishmael, the son of Abraham and her Egyptian servant Hagar, making fun of her son Isaac. So she turned to Abraham and demanded, Get rid of that slave woman and her son. He's not going to share an inheritance with my son, Isaac. I won't have it. This upset Abraham very much because Ishmael was his son. Conflict, right? Conflict. And why is there conflict? Why is this issue here in the first place? Because Abraham and Sarah tried to solve their problem on their own. God had promised that they would have descendants. Not just that they would be a great nation that came from them. But they didn't see how that was going to happen. They weren't having kids, so Sarah's the one, if you've been watching the Daily Race, proposed, hey, take my maidservant, Hagar, have a child with her. Maybe this will be how we have descendants. Well, he did, and she did have a child. But now this is the conflict. There's jealousy. There's contempt. You know, there's a lot said, uh, critical, about the Old Testament figures and having multiple wives and, you know, the Bible condoning this and stuff like that. But honestly... Every time the Bible shows someone with multiple wives, it shows the conflict. It, it shows the, the dynamics here of not being good, <laughs> of not being a positive thing. It's, it's not put in any way in positive life. There are obviously cultural things going on here and other things that we don't quite understand. The Bible doesn't go into the depths, but it surely never paints it in a good picture. When we talk about Abraham here, later we're going to talk about Jacob. Same types of problems. Uh, David and Solomon and once again not painted in a good light, the conflicts there. And as we look at this one here, it's the result of a shortcut. So Abraham, God comes up, tells Abraham, he says, don't be upset over the boy and your servant. Do whatever Sarah tells you. For Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. He reminds him, this is, this is the promise. This is the promise I made you too. It's Isaac. But I will, make your, I will also make a nation of the descendants of Hagar's son because he is your son too. Who does that become? Well, it becomes a bunch of different people groups, but the nation or the the religion of of Islam points back to Ishmael. So, more conflict, (laughs) more conflict in the future. So, he sent her out into the wilderness, gave her some food, gave her some water. She goes out and wanders, just wanders aimlessly in the desert. She doesn't have anyone to go to. She doesn't have anywhere to go. uh, And wanders aimlessly, thinks that she's about to die. Um, has no more food, no more water, places Ishmael kind of underneath a, a tree because he's 
dehydrated. He's passing. He's, he's a bit older here. He's not an infant, uh, but places him under a bush because he's exhausted, and she walks away a period of distance because she, she can't stand to watch her, her child die. But then an angel of the Lord shows up. It comforts her, points her to some water, refreshes her, and promises her and, and sends her off on her way. Eventually she goes down and, and finds Ishmael, a, a wife in Egypt, where she was from in the first place. And then we hear later about what happens to this relationship, what happens with Ishmael and his descendants and uh, who, who they become. The point is, though, Abraham looking at this mess, this conflict, this, this emotional conflict, right? This is his son. This is his son, and they had to send away. And I think, if, if only, if only I had been more patient. If only I had trusted God, if only I didn't try to solve this problem myself, I've, I would end up in the same exact spot. God delivered on his promise. Isaac came, Sarah and I have a child miraculously, but I wouldn't have had all of this other contempt and problems and conflict and issues going on here. If only I had trusted God. As I said earlier, as we started off, I'm sure we've all had those moments. If only. Well, that's really not healthy at that point, right? Like, it doesn't do Abraham good to dwell on the past. But what does it remind us when we read these accounts here, when we go through those moments? It causes us to look towards the future. Now, we've seen the pain and the suffering and the conflict of not being patient and trusting God, which should draw us to want to trust him more and more in the future. You know, a lot of times our, our faith is built on positive things. That God shows up when we need him. That God always provides and protects. We see the accounts of faith in, in, in our lives, in other people's lives, and the accounts of Scripture. But also, one of the things that builds up our, our faith are our consequences. The, the, things that, the bad things that happen when we have a lack of faith. It's a reminder that God's way is the best way. That He's not asking us to do things because He's trying to uh, limit us. He's trying to make lives miserable and take joy away from us but he's trying to protect. He's trying to put boundaries around our life because God knows the best possible way to live. He's asking us each and every day, do you trust me? Do you trust me with your next step in every area of your life, in your relationships? Do you trust me in your finances? Do you trust me in your work? Do you trust me in your parenting? Do you trust me in all these things? Would you just trust me one step today? That's that's what this account is about. That's what this conflict is about here. And we can take that into today. We can learn from positive experiences as well as negative ones. I hope that was encouraging to you today. Maybe not encouraging, but at least <laughs> corrective for you today. Maybe it puts what you've gone through or what you're going through in, in the right context so you can take that next step forward. And you might know someone that could benefit from that conversation. And I encourage you to reach out to them. Share with them. Share with them what God is, is teaching you. Either by you sharing this passage, you explaining it, or send them along the video. Invite them to join the daily race. Let's make sure that we are sharing with others what we are learning. Okay, let's go and stop there. Tomorrow we're going to continue on with another huge test of faith in Abraham's life. You might be wondering at this point, how many steps of faith, how many tests of faith is he going to go through? Well, tomorrow's a doozy. Hang on for that. For now, let's go ahead and pray and get our day started. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you so much that when you ask us to do things, when you give us rules and, and boundaries and guidance, God, that it's, it's for our protection. It's for our provision. And God, as you place the universe into existence, you spoke the world into existence along with the, the laws of physics and nature that you've written to, to move things, to, to cause things to grow. You've encoded that all in the universe around us, God. You've also given us instructions. You've also given us and, and mapped out a pathway that is the best possible way to live. And God, although we often stray from that path, um, thank you for forgiving us over and over. Thank you for allowing us to come back to you. God, you are so patient with us, even when we're not patient with your path. God, today, may we take one step forward, one step in the right direction just following closely to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. Look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.